Hello, and welcome to the May 30th, 2021 edition of Emmanuel Church Rio Rico's online virtual worship. Let's pray. Lord Christ, we come before you seeking your face, seeking your heart, seeking your loving arms. We need you. We must have you, Lord. For without you, we do not have the things that we must have to live. We do not have hope. We do not have life. We do not have love. We do not have grace. All those things that we must have to keep living. And to have those things, to find those things, we must find you. Bless us now, Lord. Speak to us. Comfort our hearts. Comfort those who mourn for those that are gone. Comfort those who are sick and need your healing. Comfort those who are afraid and worried about the future comfort us as only you can lord jesus in your precious and holy name we pray amen we continue our look at john words of love from the son of thunder and i'm calling today's message jesus will draw all people to himself <coughs> we continue our look at chapter 12 of John, starting off with the reason Jesus came. Starting in verse 27. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. This is from John chapter 12, verses 27 to 29. Jesus is in the last week of his life before the crucifixion. This would be immediately after, actually, the uh, triumphal entry. There are uh, huge crowds gathered in Jerusalem because of the Passover feast coming up. And he seems to be expressing both his very human reaction, being troubled at such a time as this, but also his very deep faith. Because he says, this is the reason I've come to this hour. Would I really want to say, Father... Save me from this hour? No, because it's the very reason Jesus came. The walk towards Calvary, day by day by day, where Jesus had set his face on following the will of God, even to the cross, was the very purpose that he came. It is not a sad mistake. It is not some kind of error on God's part. It was a part of God's plan, of God's intention, from the very beginning. Before Jesus was born, he knew this would happen. And in his death, both his full humanity and his full divinity are shown. He is shown as completely God and completely man. And his relationship of obedience to the Father is shown right here when he pleads with his Father to glorify his name. And God said, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. And it will be glorified in the sacrificial death of Jesus, where he will be both the sacrifice and the high priest making the sacrifice. It is when he is at his weakest and at his greatest. It is the reason Jesus came. The crowd doesn't really know what's going on. I suspect even those who said that it thundered thought maybe something more was going on, but they just couldn't wrap their brains around it. That it was, it was something beyond their experience and something they didn't want to deal with. So they decided it had to be thunder, because what else could make that kind of noise? 
Next, he must be lifted up. Jesus said, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. Because, of course, Jesus already knew this. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. John 12, verses 30 through 33. Now, of course, Jesus knew what was going to happen. He didn't need God to tell him, so that's not surprising. But what he tells the crowd is that he must be lifted up. Now, this, of course, could also be translated as exalted, because to be lifted up is to be exalted. So that would be certainly understandable to be used that way, but that's not the only way he means it. He's speaking of his crucifixion. And he says, I must be crucified. And it is at his crucifixion, it is when he is lifted up, that judgment is applied to the world. That the prince of the world, Satan, is driven out. Remember, when Satan was tempting Jesus after he had fasted for 40 days in the desert, he takes him up to the top of the temple and he points out everything. He says, all this I will give you if you will just bow down and worship me. You see, he's the self-appointed prince of this world. But in fact, Jesus knew and has always known that Satan had no power. That ultimately he had nothing that was truly his. And so he is driven out of that position of power. He is no longer, in any sense, the prince of this world. I know it feels like that to us sometimes, but you see, the world has already come into judgment because Christ was lifted up, because he was crucified, because he was nailed to the cross. The world has been judged and found wanting. But you see, we have hope in Jesus Christ. It is in his mercy, it is in his grace that we find life, that we have hope, that we have all those things that make life worth living. Jesus knew exactly what was going to happen. He knew it from the very beginning. And it was his purpose and his goal to accomplish that. And by doing this, he says that he has drawn all people to himself. Now, I just want to say an aside here. I am, I am most definitively not a full Calvinist. I'm kind of a partial Calvinist. And if you don't know what that means, that's okay. Calvinism teaches that those who are destined to be saved will be saved. Those who are not destined to be saved will not be saved. And there is no crossing from one to the other. I don't agree with that. I understand Calvinists have a very high and a very exalted view of the, the sovereignty of God. And I agree with that, and I believe that. But I also think that the wording Jesus uses here is very important. He says, I will draw all people to myself. He attracts people to him. He, he pulls us to him, but he does not force us to come to him. It is a a subtle but ever-present attraction. It's, it's the response that Blaise Pascal talked about when he said, there's a God-shaped vacuum in the heart of each man which cannot be satisfied by any created thing but only by God the Creator made known through Jesus Christ. You see, all of us long for Jesus. We may not know that's what we long for. We may not know that's what we're looking for. But all humanity longs and desires and earnestly wishes for Jesus. Oh, we, we seek to fill that longing by many other things sometimes. We resist the pull of Jesus Christ. We try to fill the longing. We try to fill that need with other people. We try to fill that need with other things. We try to fill that need with created gods, but ultimately none of them can fill 
the need, because you see, when Jesus has been lifted up, and he has, he has given his life for us. He draws us all to him. And we might try other substitutes, but we will never know rest. We will never know peace until we find that rest in him. Going on, children of light, the crowd spoke up. We've heard from the law that the Messiah will remain forever, so how can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Then Jesus told them, You're going to have the light just a little while longer. Walk while you have the light before darkness overtakes you. Whoever walks in the dark does not know where they are going. Believe in the light while you have the light, so that you may become children of light. When he had finished speaking, Jesus left and hid himself from them. John 12, verses 34 through 36. Jesus is telling us what we have to do. It was, in fact, a very, very short time that Jesus would still be with the people of Jerusalem. Days. Just a very few days. And they were asking the wrong questions. They were looking for the wrong thing. Jesus says, I will only be with you a little bit longer, and then I'm going to be gone. Listen, walk, obey, follow while you can still see what you're doing. I, I like to go walking and often go walking in the, the evening, in the late afternoon. But I have to be careful because if I go walking too late, it just gets too dark. I've been out walking on, on trails through the, through the woods. And when the sun sets, it's just too dark to see the, the path. And so if I'm not at the end of the trail at that point, I don't know where I'm going anymore. Now I have a flashlight on my phone so I can provide some light. But that's kind of skipping the point. We can't see where we're going without light. And Jesus is the light. And if we're not looking where we're going by his light, then we'll never see where we're going. There are an awful lot of people wandering around in the darkness. We need to bring the light of Jesus to them. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, help us to see you, help us to love you, and help us to reflect your light, so that others may find you. This we pray in your precious and holy name. Amen. Thank you. May God bless you. Go in peace.